It's a windy spring day on the Texas coast, and biologists from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and U.S. Geological Survey are out to capture some birds. So the buff-breasted sandpiper, you know, winters in Uruguay and Argentina and migrates through the mid-continent along uh, Texas coast in Nebraska. So it's a bird that covers a uh, western hemisphere, and as a result, we have like a western hemisphere team on this project. While the buff-breasted sandpiper may not be a well-known bird, they have a reputation of being both beautiful and unique. This is a really cool bird because it almost acts like most people would be familiar with a prairie chicken or a sage grouse because the males will display and they do this wonderful courtship display to attract females. And um, so it's just, it's a really interesting shorebird. So here's the bird, buff-breasted sandpiper. Beautiful bird getting her breeding plumage. Based on the dots on the wing, it's probably a female, I guess, but we'll have Rick, who's the expert on that, tell us. They're a very unique bird, but they're part of this whole suite of species that uses this whole migration route from South America through Central America up to North America where they breed. And there's just a whole suite of species that do that. And this bird is pretty unique in that it uses very distinct habitats in that range that are really um, impacted. Seeing exactly where these birds go on their migration and how long they stay at stopover sites is what researchers with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and U.S. Geological Survey want to understand. Right now we're um, putting some very small transmitters on these buff-breasted sandpipers so we can track them as they move north from here from Texas all the way up to the Arctic breeding area. Knowing where buff-breasted sandpipers stop along their migration and how long they stay and the habitats they prefer help biologists plan for future conservation efforts. And the hope is that we put these tags out, the birds migrate, after they recover the, or get the 30 locations, we send that data back to the folks in Texas or the people in Nebraska or Kansas, and we say, here's the GPS locations of where those birds were when they migrated through. Can you go to that place and see what it is? 49. Point one. 49.1. In addition to learning about migration stopover sites, timing, and other patterns, researchers are hoping to come up with a new population estimate for the species. Since it's a species that's really spread out across the landscape in low numbers, it presents some challenges. And one of the big things that we're out here for is to get an accurate population estimate, which has been difficult to do. To determine an accurate population estimate, the project biologists and volunteers are employing a three-prong approach. We're doing standardized surveys. We're surveying turf farms or sod farms where we think most of the birds may be along the Texas coast. And then we're also putting GPS uh, units on birds. So those three pieces of data we're hoping uh, will come together to help us come up with a protocol on how to get an accurate or fairly accurate population estimate. Having an accurate population estimate and knowing what types of habitats buff-breasted sandpipers need will help the service target conservation actions and dollars in areas likely to achieve the most success. We call them species of conservation concern. And generally, our, the goal of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is to make sure those species don't become so rare that we have to list them. And we we want to learn what's going on so that we can change habits of one sort or another. Of course, none of this work would be possible without the help of partners. So the buff-breasted sandpiper is a species that depends on portions of the Western Hemisphere to meet its life cycle needs. And so as a result, we have a, a team of partners all the way from the Arctic down to Argentina. And uh, Fish and Wildlife Service is involved at three different regions. Several states are involved, Texas Parks and Wildlife, uh, University of Nebraska at Omaha, several uh, bird observatories here along the Gulf Coast, Gulf Coast Joint Venture, and uh, National Audubon, so as well as some amazing volunteers. One thing is clear as you talk to people involved in the project. Buff-breasted sandpipers are a species worth studying, worth admiring, and worth saving. Future generations should be able to see a buff-breasted sandpiper. It's a really neat species, and they're doing, like a lot of other long-distance shorebirds, they're migrating all the way from South America. They'll stop once, feed for a couple of days, we think, up to seven, we're not really sure potentially even double their body weight, and then take another giant leap to the Arctic. And uh, it's just a fantastic species.